Welcome back once again, all of my low carb friends. And for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Today, I have another very easy keto dessert recipe for you. Today, we are going to make super simple keto butter cake. This cake is perfect when you're wanting something sweet, but you don't want something really heavy and rich. You know, if you're like me after dinner, I always want a little taste of something sweet, but I don't always want something that's rich and decadent. And this cake is perfect for when you just want that little taste of something sweet after dinner or anytime. And if you want a printable version of this recipe, you can check out my website at janetsdeliciouslowcarbkitchen.com. You can find a printable version of this recipe and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious, low carb keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you could be notified every time I put out videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you'd like to help support the channel, Channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything using those affiliate links, a small portion of your purchase will go to me and help support the channel. So while we do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Line an 8 inch square cake pan with parchment paper and allow the paper to hang over the sides just a little bit so you can use these as handles once the cake is done cooking. In a medium mixing bowl, combine 120 grams or around one cup of coconut flour, 15 grams or around one tablespoon of baking powder, one fourth teaspoon of salt, and 150 grams or around three fourths cup of the granulated sweetener of your choice, I'm using granulated monk fruit sweetener. You can use whatever granulated sweetener you want. You can also adjust this more or less depending on how sweet you want your cake. And if you're sensitive to the taste of coconut flour, if you want to, you can add some dry spices to kind of balance out the coconut flour flavor. Sift or whisk the dry ingredients all together until everything is fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Set that aside for just a minute. In a large mixer bowl, 3 fourths cup of room temperature butter that's very soft, not melted, but very soft. Beat the butter on low for about 10 seconds or just until the butter starts breaking up a little bit. Then increase the speed to medium and beat on medium around 30 to 45 seconds or until the butter is smooth and creamy. If you don't have a standing mixer or a hand mixer, you can do this with just a wooden spoon or a whisk. It'll just take a little bit more time. Once the butter's creamy, scrape down the sides of the bowl and push the butter to the center of the bowl. Add 123 grams or around a half cup of room temperature plain yogurt or sour cream and eight grams or around two teaspoons of vanilla extract. You can adjust this more or less depending on how much of a vanilla flavor you want in your cake. Beat on low for about 10 seconds or just until the ingredients start coming together. Then increase the speed to medium low and beat on medium low for 20 seconds until everything is fully combined. Scrape down the sides of the bowl once again Add four large room temperature eggs. Make sure they are room temperature so they blend in more smooth. Beat on low for 10 seconds or just until the eggs start combining a little bit. Then increase your speed to medium low. Beat on medium low for another 20, 30 seconds or until everything is fully combined. Scrape down the sides of the bowl once again. Turn your mixer on to low and gradually add the flour mixture to the butter mixture in small amounts and allow the dry ingredients to beat in after each addition until fully combined. Make sure you just do this gradually. This will help you to have a smoother dough, which will help you to have a lighter, more fluffy cake. So you don't want to just dump the dry ingredients in. If you do that, it can chunk up on you and then you have lumps and then you have more of a tough cake rather than a light fluffy one. Once all the dry ingredients have been added into the wet ingredients and they're combined, scrape down the sides of the bowl and beat on medium speed for another 30 to 45 seconds or until you have a soft, smooth dough that has formed. 
Scrape down the sides of the bowl once again and push all the dough to the center of the bowl. Then form the dough into a ball. Take the dough ball and massage it in your hands for about one minute. This is going to help with the texture. As you're massaging it, the dough will absorb any extra moisture and the ball of dough should be really smooth and staying together really well. If chunks are falling off, then that means your dough is a little bit too dry and you need to add a little bit more water or room temperature milk. After you've massaged the dough for one minute, form it back into a ball, then place it in the center of your prepared cake pan. Use your fingers or the back of a measuring cup and press the dough firmly and evenly throughout the pan. Make sure you get it as even as possible. Then place the cake into your preheated oven. Bake at 350 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes or until golden and a tester comes out clean. For me, it took about 28 minutes. As I always tell you, everybody's oven is different. So you're looking for the cake to be golden and a tester to come out clean. Once the cake is done baking, remove it from the oven. It still will be soft, but it will firm up as it cools. Allow it to cool in the pan for at least one hour so it can firm up enough to not fall apart when you try to remove it. After one hour, grasp the overhanging parchment paper and carefully lift the cake out of the cake pan and transfer it to a wire rack and allow it to cool completely before slicing. Make sure you are careful when you are transferring the cake. It still will be a little bit warm and gluten-free baked goods are always fragile when they are warm, so be careful. Also make sure you do allow your cake to cool completely before you slice it. If you try to slice it when it's warm, you run the risk of your cake crumbling on you. Once it's cooled completely, you can eat it plain just as it is if you want to, or you can frost it or put a glaze on it. Me right here, I'm just dusting it with some powdered sweetener, just enough to make it look pretty. I don't want this to be overly sweet. So once you're done frosting it or putting any powdered sweetener on it, if you choose to put any topping on it, Cut it into your desired size piece. You can eat this immediately. If you do have any leftovers, store them in an airtight container at room temperature for up to five days. Eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.